what is the vibration basically and how it is important to know for a mechanical engineer so vibration is nothing but the any motion which repeats itself is called vibration so uh, if you, if you look at some kind of waves this is called this is the kind of oscillation which is happening we call a thing is vibrating means vibration when you when you call that the vibration is taking place in any machine or if you are suppose sitting in your car then you see some kind of vibration is coming so when you when you call it that the vibration is coming when it starts at one point goes down and again come back and goes again goes down and, and and so on it repeats the motion then that kind of motion is called vibration so i'll just write down a simplified way of understanding the vibration and slowly we we will go into the depth of this topic so vibration is nothing but any motion any motion that repeats itself any motion that repeat itself after an interval of time so this is what is called vibration so this is the very basic definition of vibration that any motion that repeat itself that that repeat itself after an interval of time is called vibration now we we generally talk about the various kind of vibratory system and we used to study those vibratory system and the practical if you try to relate this vibration with the practical life and why this topic is there in the mechanical engineering syllabus so i just want to give you a short glimpse of that the vibration is is a, i would say it's a very very important topic to know for a mechanical engineer the reason is if you are sitting in your car you will you will you will face some kind of jerks so how how you feel in that kind of situation as a human being just think that if you are not an engineer if you are just a human being okay you do not know any engineering uh, stuffs then in that kind of situation how, how do you feel as a as a human being what you will expect that if i am sitting in the car jerk should not be there if you are working on a machine right if you are working on a machine the precision and the accuracy will only come when their kind of disturbing forces will not be there then there will not be any kind of disturbance if suppose you are working on a machine and the machine base is oscillating then you will not be able to pick the job properly and you will not be able to work the properly anyway if it even though if it is a automatic machine then also in that kind of situation whatever the task you are expecting the machine to perform it won't it won't be able to do that so as a, in general what we want that we want to control that vibration we want to control that vibration so that whatever the desired task we want from a machine or from a system that can be achieved and that can only be done so that is called the vibration isolation that we want to avoid the vibration so what are the those two techniques and that we can only know when we understand the very basic things of vibration and the fundamental of vibration and fundamental of the vibratory systems so i would start from that topic so i think this much idea would be would be enough uh, to begin with and as we proceed we will see some of the interesting stuffs and i would try to give some practical example so that you will get more interest into the topic and you you will be really feeling happy to solve a little mathematics involved in the vibration but as i am again repeating that you don't have to worry about anything that whether i know about this topic or don't know or this topic is covered earlier or not covered not a problem at all just follow the class properly ask the question whatever you have in your mind okay
and i would suggest to to have the short notes what i am putting on the board so that once i will try to uh, recall the things you can just follow the follow your notes and we we uh, we can be on the same page so the next thing in vibration is vibratory system so what is what is called the vibratory system and what are the elements of vibratory system so if if you have come across or if, if even if, if you have not come across the kind of vibratory system then the there are basically three means in the vibratory system the first one the first one is called the means means for storing means for storing potential energy means for storing potential energy so what is the means by which the potential energy is stored in a vibratory system so that element is called the spring then second thing you will see means for storing kinetic energy what is the means by which the kinetic energy is stored in the body what is the basic formula of kinetic energy half mv square so what we say that if any mass is moving with certain velocity then the kinetic energy is stored in the body is half mv square so if you have some mass then only it will possess some kinetic energy so this element is called the mass so means for storing the kinetic energy is nothing but mass and the third one is means by which energy means by which energy is gradually lost so what is the means by which the energy will gradually lost and that element is called the damper so these are the three fundamental elements of a vibratory system means for storing the potential energy that is nothing but a spring means for storing the kinetic energy that is nothing but a mass and means by which energy is gradually lost it is called the damper so uh, the th these are the fundamental elements of a vibratory system and what are the quantities by which we will be knowing this fundamental properties of vibratory system so spring is represented by spring constant spring constant and it will nothing but it will show that how stiff your system is spring constant if you have the more spring constant it means it is a high stiff spring high stiff spring in it means if you try to apply a force then it will deflect by a very little amount and if you take the another spring and if you apply the same force it is deflecting by the three times of the earlier it means that this spring constant is less so it is a less uh, less stiff spring so in that way we can directly say that if the spring constant is more it is the high stiff spring which will require the more force in order to deform the second thing is the means for storing the kinetic energy that is nothing but the mass and mass is represented by m in kg so the unit for k is newton per mm newton per mm or newton per meter so it is just nothing but the whether you are taking in the si system or which system so either newton per meter or newton per so if we keep in the si system also we can keep it so it is newton per meter 
So what it indicates basically that if I apply a unit, if I apply the unit force and it if it will get deflected by one meter, then the spring stiffness will be one newton per meter. And that is the reason we generally use newton per mm because one meter is a very large. One meter will be 3.33 feet, so it's a very big quantity. So basically, what we call newton per mm. So one mm, if I want to deflect the spring by one mm, how much force I need to apply? That is nothing but is called your stiffness. And mass, it 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 can it is in kg. And this damping constant, so it is represented by your C. and i will give the details because i don't want to give the units right now i will just explain you this thing first and then i'll talk about this so what we need to see that m k and c these are three fundamental things you will see in each and every vibratory system okay so we we learned i'll just uh, summarize the vibration is nothing but those if people join late so for those people i am just trying to repeat in short so that you can follow the class from now onwards vibration is nothing but the repetition of the same motion again and again that is called the vibration and as i told you that the we we this vibration is a very important thing for a mechanical engineer to know because we finally want the control over the vibration and that control can be achieved when we know that how the system is functioning and you can know about the system only when you know the fundamental things so what are the fundamental things is the vibratory system and these are the three vibratory this three fundamental quantities means for storing potential energy means for storing kinetic energy and means by which gradually energy is gradually lost so uh, i uh, i think these two things are quite clear to everybody but the last part that means by which energy is gradually lost so if you look at the pendulum if you just apply the force so what the what the pendulum will do pendulum will start moving but after a certain point of time you will see that it will come to its equilibrium position so why it is coming why it is coming to its equilibrium position because there is some kind of friction there is some kind of a resistance offered and because of which this energy is is not there now and this energy is gradually lost so what it is trying to do basically it is trying to grade the, the the resistance whatever is present that resistance will will cause the energy to get lost energy get lost it doesn't mean that energy can if you look at the uh, basic principle of the energy that energy can can neither be created nor be destroyed but actually what happens that it it the energy get lost in the form of some unuseful energy because here these two are the useful form of the energy but when finally it will stop all the useful form of the energy will go as a waste form of the energy that is also a form of energy but which where we are not interested in 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 the unuseful form of the energy 